The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering, ev covering everything theater. And I'm coming to you from the LTV studio in Wainscott, where I have a really special guest today, my friend Christina Strassfield, the museum director of Guild Hall and chief curator. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure to have you. Patrick, it's wonderful to be here and wonderful to see you in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got through the COVID for the first batch here, but uh, you're going to have to tell us what's going on at Guild Hall. <laughs> you, you have an exciting exhibit right now, All for the Hall, uh, that was conceived by Robert Longo, who was going to be the artist that was going to be up, and he said, no, we have to do this, we have to have a show. Tell us. Tell well, us. we're so excited because we were going to be doing the Robert Longo exhibition, and Early on, Robert realized what was happening with COVID, it just was not going to be the time to do a gala like we always have, which is in conjunction with our August exhibition. So he said, we need to do something, and we need to think about it, and something for Guild Hall. And it was his idea to have a show, which would be a fundraising show. So he would get all his friends who were artists to donate artwork to Guild Hall. We would have the exhibition, and we would be able to sell everything. So it was really a godsend to have him do this and to give up, give up his own show with no guarantee, but we are gonna do his show next year. But we were so thrilled because he went to all of his friends, Cindy Sherman, Rashid Johnson, major artists, and each one of them donated a piece of you art. Have, you have works by all of these people in this exhibition. Absolutely, we have 66 pieces of art, and we've sold about, I would say, half of them, but there's still uh, lots of good work that you, you might want to see. half the pieces already. Absolutely, yes. We opened it up on August 8th, and the show has opened, uh, it's open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right now in November, we're going to go to just having Saturday and Sunday being our open days. It's, open, it's up through the end of the year, too. It's up through the end of the and year. There, there are all kinds of variety of ways that people can go view this exhibition, too, right? Absolutely. Let, let, let's show some of the images just so maybe they'll help people figure sure. out how they want to go and see where they want to, yes. how they want to do Perfect it. Perfect timing. So let's have the pictures that we have a few pictures. Uh, so this is the, the, the entrance. This is the entrance to the exhibition and it listed all the different sponsors that we've had. And as you can see, it says conceived by Robert Longo because again, he was just brilliant by doing this idea for us. Okay, next. And this is Robert. This is Robert Longo. And Robert is an artist who's gained had tremendous success in his career. He's going off to California right now to open a show, major show there. Um, he sh shows at Metro Pictures in New York City. He's an artist. He's a filmmaker. He's a musician. He's a Renaissance man. He's the real deal. And he's a generous patron, too. And he's patron a very too. <laughs> generous patron, absolutely. Next. So, God, you tell us this. Tell, explain this to everyone. Great. So we're going to we're going to show the we're going to show the video, the video before we go to the yes. picture. Mine bad. I'm sorry, Riley. Go. We have a video. This is the exhibition in its entire. You talk. Yes. Now, this is something called a Matterport, and normally they use this to show um, houses when they want to preview houses. Uh, but Joe Bronda, who works for us, who's our digital director, got a hold of it. And what you can do is you can actually, when you go to our website, you can go through this and you can move with your cursor and go from room to room. You can focus in on each individual piece. You can turn around. You can look at the scale of the piece. So it really gives you a wonderful preview of what we have in the show. And then you could come to the show and you could look at it. You could also purchase it online. So it's really sort of multi-levels of experiencing the art. And so, so you, you go to your website. The Guild yes. Hall website. The Guild Hall and you, you, there's, a, there's a link for this little. Yes, it says Matterport. Just go to the link, and with your mouse, you'll be able to move all the way around all three galleries, going back and forth, um, and looking at different works of art and comparing them. 
And, and when, when, you, when you go on one little piece, can you click on it and make it bigger? You can how? click on it, make it bigger. You can get details. It so gives it's you a description really of wonderful. everything. How cool. It really is. It's a, a great invention, and it's, we're going to be doing it for all of our exhibitions going forward. No. And it's kind of interesting because COVID did that. You know, you had to really um, learn to change things. So putting a lot of things online, photographing things in the exhibition like this with the Matterport uh, was something that we had, we had been thinking about, but we really hadn't done. And so it pushed us but pushed us in the right direction. How terrific. There, yes. There, there are some good things that will come some out of this. I, I've always felt like the pause will give us an opportunity if we go inward to really think about what else we need to do when we, Absolutely. you know, it could be a good thing if Absolutely. we work it. Uh, but there are other, you can also get to the gallery. You don't have to just go online. You can, there are, the yes, we open. have the website. The gallery is open, and you can come in. And we have COVID safety protocols in place. You have to wear a mask. You have to be six feet apart. We limit how many people can come into the gallery you have at to one call time. In advance and make um, an you can call to make a recommendation, but we are doing drop-ins now because we haven't reached the maximum. Um, but it's really it's a great opportunity. Um, the other day, I was walking someone through. There was five of us in the gallery at that mm -hmm. time, literally for the half an hour that we were there. So it was a great opportunity to see the art, to linger in so, front so of I'd it, like to, pop to not in feel tomorrow crowded. Or Friday. What's the time? Absolutely. To Friday time? will be noon to five. And what about tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow is Mon Tuesday. We're closed Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. To five on yes. Friday. Yes. 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 <laughs> Do it on Friday, and you'll enjoy it. You I, really I, I will. I look forward to it. Absolutely. So, so now we have actually pictures of the individual. Yes, we've got some rooms. great pictures that I'd love to show you. This. The picture that's right on the fireplace wall is a wing, and that is a picture that Robert Longo actually donated to Guildhall, and it sold for ninety thousand dollars. So we're really in this really exhibition. Thrilled. In this exhibition, Whoa. <laughs> it is a charcoal on vellum, and everyone, when you come into the gallery and you see this, you're going to be blown away because you're going to say it's a photograph. And even when you get probably a foot away, you're going to say it's still a photograph and it's all done by hand with charcoal. So it's an amazing work of art. And we have everything. We have photographs, we have paintings. Uh, we have, if you can see on the left there, there's Steve Miller. He has these wonderful um, images that he does that look like they are x-rays. Uh, one is a plant and the other one is the images on a surfboard. So uh, something for everything in this exhibition, sculpture and materials. Um, we have the pink one that you see, looks like a Jackson Pollock and it's a matte sats and it's made with smoke. So I really think that when you come into the gallery, you're gonna find something that you're gonna like. No matter what kind of taste you have, you'll find something that you would like. And again, there's lots of things that are still available for sale. And it's all for the hall. All for the hall. <laughs> I love that slogan. <laughs> did, did Robert make that up? No, I made that one up. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. <laughs> you're a copywriter too. <laughs> You're an amazing lady. Oh, you really thank you. Are. Thank you. We have some more pictures from the gallery. So what, what, what room is this? So this is kind of wonderful. As you can see, that <coughs> sign says, I love, and it looks like snakes. And if you're familiar with the Guildhall logo, or at least the old logo, was that G, that, that cut G, and that cut H. And that's by Joel Messler, a wonderful, wonderful piece. The black piece in the corner is by Diane Blell. And when you're standing in front of that piece, you see your reflection in that piece with a little flower. So you become part of the artwork. It's a wonderful uh, sort of give and take for that particular piece. There's some wonderful nude photographs, a nude drawing in the end, and a Taryn Simon. Taryn Simon is one of the artists that was a um, Lifetime Achievement Award winner. She had a one-person show at Guildhall, and we were thrilled to be able to have her in this exhibition as well. Wow. She was willing to donate a work of art to us, and we were just so thrilled to it have that. It is just incredible. I the artist's generosity was amazing, Patrick. They came, we asked them immediately, no one said no. What, let's see some more. That's the same one. So um, this is the other side of the room there, and you can see some of the pieces. The sculptures are, one is by Tony Ross, the one on the right is by Tony Ross. The other one is by Ned Smythe, of the small fragment one. And uh, in the back part of the wall, you can see a Jennifer Cross on the far wall on the right and a Karen Weissman. Karen Weissman is an artist who's going to be having a one-person show next year. She was supposed to have the spring show this year, um, the May-June the May June slot, and unfortunately we had to postpone that one, so she will be showing next year as well. So we've had to move some things over from this year to next year, and 
that's kind of exciting, and we have something to look forward to. We can, do, do we have any anticipated, we can take it down for a sec, do we have any anticipated date that we'll be able to actually open? Um, we are hoping that we're going to have, come January, we're going to do our regular schedule, having the Student Arts Festival in January, February. March, April will be the members show. May, June will be Karen's show. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to have an Alexis Rockman show, and then Clothesline Art Sale, and then Robert Longo's show that he was supposed to have this year. Which will be in the fall? Which will be, um, no, it'll open in August and run through the fall. And let's, let's go back to the gallery. We have some, the next image is another room. Is Yes, oh, so this, this is wonderful because this is a video piece by um, Robert Wilson, the noted right. Robert Wilson from the Watermill Center. And what's great is that when you first see it, it's a light bulb and it's totally dark. And then you just get the rim of the light bulb. And as you're there for the eight minutes, it fully comes around so that you see the light bulb and then it fades away again. Um, I, a video art is always such an interesting thing. And sometimes I watch certain things and I was like, but could I live with that in my house? <laughs> and I'm like, no. But this one, uh, it's mesmerizing. You watch it and there's a sense of calm and a peace because you're seeing it come come about and then you're seeing it fade away. And just sitting there for it's those like eight minutes. Like the tide going in and out almost. Like the tide, absolutely. <laughs> and there's a tremendous sense of calm when you're watching. It's a beautiful piece, black and white, stunning. Did, I think we have a second picture of, of it when it goes black. Or, can we see it? The next image. No, there was, there's another image of that one, I thought. There were two images of that one. Yeah. Did we, we didn't get this one yet, did we? Uh, no, we didn't get this one, but this is the Woodhouse Gallery now. You're looking in the other um, space that we have, and the, the piece in the center of the wall is a Clifford Ross, and what it's showing you is the ocean. And so you have the white of the sky and then the frothiness of the ocean curls, and then the bottom is all black. So there's a lot, it's kind of interesting when I'm looking at these images, I see that there's a lot of black and white work in the show, and it's all extremely powerful. I mean, it really is. And when you're looking at it again, there's a sense of calm, even though the waves are crashing, there's a sense of calm when you're looking at it. I think we all love to look at the ocean. It takes us to a different place. So that's kind of wonderful. The little paintings on the far side were um, Ugo Rondononi, who again had the show last year that we had at Guildhall, and he did a whole series he called Matatuck Sunsets, and he's used three colors, and he's repeated them. They're all small works. Again, they're so beautiful. I would want to buy all of them and have them in my home as a series, but even one, it just takes you to a different place in time. So you're looking again, you're looking at the oceans, you're looking at um, something that's giving you peace, and these landscapes do the same sort of thing. They really sort of calm you down, but beautiful work, something that you would want to live with forever. Absolutely. So it's, I love stuff like that. It's, my, it's right <laughs> on my center. <laughs> uh, so, so I think we have some more from the, from the gal. There's another. There's another one. And we had a wonderful piece of furniture um, by uh, Nico Yektai um, and uh, his brother, uh, Darius Yektai, is in the corner. These are other artists who've had one person shows. Um, the egret there that you see is John Alexander, another Lifetime Achievement Award winner. We have a young work by Mason, a young artist named Mason Saltarelli, uh, which is sort of the abstracted piece next to the blue piece. So again, once again, there are things by everyone. Uh, the red and blue piece that's next to it is Dorothea Rockburn. She was the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award last year, and she again was so thrilled. She said, I'm going to give you something great, and she did. <laughs> and I love that. I love that each artist really wanted to give us something good. They didn't want to just give us something that they wanted to get rid of. Sometimes that happens when people are selling things or they have to donate but they really felt that guilt hall meant something to them and they appreciated it and they really they dug deep to give us good work um, here you can see a close-up of the wave the uh, beautiful wave by Clifford Ross and the piece on the right is the piece uh, by Dorothea Rockburn there's also Carol Pelagian has this beautiful wavy um, metal piece a wall sculpture um, so again as I said to you each piece is unique, and when you're looking at it, I remember when they were all coming, that was the beautiful little Lugo underneath. Each piece um, is representing the artist really well, but again, really showing us the depth of their work and the quality of their work. You know, what's amazing is the, how many 
artists, you've got to contribute their pieces. Absolutely. The body of work that Absolutely. you have in these three rooms is mind-boggling as you're telling me who it all is. I can't wait to get there on <laughs> Friday. You really will love to see it, and you'll be surprised. And there's some artists who are major, major artists. There's some artists that maybe you didn't know, and you'll be intrigued by all of the work, really. Each one has its unique feeling to it. And as I was putting it together, as usual, at first when it always comes in, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's a little tricky, and it always comes together beautifully. And I think each of the artists, when Robert Longo came in, he goes, how did you do this? <laughs> so it was really kind of wonderful. He took a page from my book. I, I always say, how do you do this? When, when you do the members exhibition, right, it just right. blows my mind what you're able to do with those. And, 450 and put, pieces. And make Absolutely. them all work in, in a beautiful flow. It's just, it, how do you do it? Where do you start? Where do I start? You know, with each show that I do, I mean, when I'm selecting the works, it's kind of different because then I know as I'm selecting it, I'm visualizing where I'm going to put it in the room. With this show, since I didn't make the choices, the artists made the choices, I just had to deal with it. And it, and I know my space. I've worked in that space for yeah, a long I have to, time. You know, it kind of becomes second nature it in does. a way, right? So people are like, oh, do you have to draw things out? I was like, no, I, I can figure out scale and all in my head. You can feel I know it, right? The, it, I can it's see instinctive. it. I can really see it. So I really have, have that sense of ability. When it comes to the member show, when you have 450, <laughs> <laughs> That's hard because you have to begin to make. It's me. It's impossible. <laughs> you have to begin to make alliances, one to one, then the one next to it, then the one above it, then the one next to that. So you have to start thinking in in terms of a grid and making the grid grow. Oh. Um, so you're looking at color, you're looking at shape, you're looking at pattern. Um, I try to mix it up so you don't have all photographs together or all drawings. Trying to mix the media as well. And so what happens is I start a little section, I work at it. I get to a point where I can't work anymore. I go somewhere else. I start another section, and I just keep going like that um, to try to create the flow in the room. And I think that works with all exhibitions, to try to get a flow, giving each work the respect that it needs and the admiration that it needs. Did you have a team that works with you? I lay it all out, and then they hang it. I don't do the hang. <laughs> And I just say higher, lower, but I, I lay it out. Yeah, on, but when yeah. you lay it out, how do you lay it out? You lay it on the floor? I lay it on the floor. And the floor in front of the wall and that it's going to go up? Door. Yes, if there's a double hang, one will be on the wall, one will be on the floor. And so they and they know my system. Mm -hmm. And then they know how much in, how many inches and then, apart I want it. And, and, then, and then when they hang it, you come and watch them hang it? Oh, yeah. And say up a little more. Up to the Absolutely, rock. yeah. Yeah, just to make sure that it's all exactly the way we want it. And I'm curious, can, can you tell... If it's perfectly straight without a level? Yes. <laughs> but the best one, I will never forget, um, we were doing an Eric Fischel show, and his work was, there was a piece on the fireplace wall, and it, to me it looked perfect. He said, I think that's like a loft. It was a half an inch off, and he could see that all the way down the gallery. I, I said, that really impressed me that he could do that all the way down. That I was surprised at. I, I didn't have that ability <laughs> to, do, to, do that, to do that one. I, I well. have the skill, so I know. <laughs> but I don't know if I have that one. <laughs> wow, that's, it was a tough one. That's a really tough one. Yeah. So, we, we, we have a few more images, too, that I think we want to look at. So this is, again, there's the Uga Rondoni, and what's wonderful, the one next to it is the Cindy Sherman. And as um, everyone knows, Cindy Sherman's having a, a major a retrospective um, in Europe right now. And again, wonderful. We had done a one-person show is for Is that piece still available? Was, it hasn't sold? This piece sold right away. Oh, it sold. It's, sold right it's away. gone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this piece sold right away. She was the winner of a Lifetime Achievement Award. She had a one-person show at Guildhall. So a lot of the artists that have been included here have had one-person shows and ha have been the, the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Awards. So again, we gave to them. They're giving back to us. And it's a what wonderful synergy. What did that piece synergy. sell for? That piece, I know? believe, was like $40,000. And that, that was a bargain. That was a bargain. I could realize that, Cindy yes, Sherman yes. at this point of her career. Wow. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And did, 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 who, who set the prices? The artist set the prices. Okay. And we did it as a sale so that each of the artists could choose the amount that they want. Because sometimes what happens is when they do an auction, they feel that um, sometimes people want to not bid a lot and not... Um, not give the full value to right. the work. So we said to the artist, you choose the price and we stick by it. That's it. We're not going to be bargaining. And um, each of the artists really appreciated that. The so. reason I asked, I was wondering who put the, the, the reasonable, the, the bargain price on this Cindy and, Sherman. You know, but they did that because they That's really wanted it to yeah, sell for Guild Hall. And I think that was such a wonderful uh, rapport that they had mm -hmm. with us, you know, that they understood we're in a difficult situation right now. Everyone's in a difficult situation. What can we do to help each other? And that was wonderful.
Bravo. <laughs> Bravo, Cindy. <laughs> yes. And all the other artists, too. Yes. yes. Of course. And what else do we have? I think we have. Let's see. Um, well, I just want to show you that's an Eric Fischel, the one on the right. Uh, the middle is a Renee Cox. The one on the left is a Judy Hudson, a Sam Moyer. Um, Alice Aycock, uh, Tony Ursler, and Elena Bajo. And I would say a, I would say a half, of, half of these have already sold. So we're really excited about wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Again, we have photography, we have watercolor, we have acrylic, um, we have mixed media. So there really is, there were so many varieties of work that you could find. And here again, the show again is open uh, up, up until December 31st. So we really encourage people to come and come take a look at it. You could take that image down. And down. Uh, that's it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we I can't are. wait to see on it, Friday. It is a great <clears throat> show, and it really I encourage everyone because you're going to be so surprised by what people have donated, the, the amount of work, the quality of the work, and the variety. It's all for the hall, and you've got all kinds of ways of visiting. You can go online, Absolutely. Guild Hall, or you can go right in person. Uh, just check all the gallery hours there. I'm sure you, it's all guildhall.org. Guild yes. Guildhall.org. Right. You can find it everything you need to know about Guildhall. Yes. Uh, so you, you're, I don't know how you do all these things and, and raise a family and, <laughs> and, and you have grandchildren too? No, not grandchildren no, no, yet. No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I, that son of yours, I think he's working on yeah. it. <laughs> the one that just got married a year now. A year now, yes. <laughs> So you've got to, you, you may it find may happen. It may happen. Now, what do we have? We, have, we, you, we also, also have some wonderful programs. Oh, yes, we do yes, have, yes. Um, I don't know which this slide is next. next. Um, this is Monica Banks. What we wanted to do was we wanted to energize, because we know that a lot of people are sometimes nervous about coming indoors. So Monica Banks, I approached her and I said, I'd love for you to do an installation outside. And so we did this in the, in the Furman Sculpture Garden. And she calls these her cloud garden. And they're beautiful metal, wi metal wires. And they're all the different varieties of metal wires. Some of them have feathers. Some of them have beads. Some of them have crushed Nerf balls on them. And they're, they're coming, they're hanging down from a translucent wire. And they flow again so beautifully. Um, she has been coming in every morning, and she films them. And again, it's her time to, to sort of center herself. But when you're there, we did a yoga class outside. The uh, participants were sitting there, and they were just sitting underneath these. In trance. These, in trance, because uh, it was taking you to a different world. So again, wonderful work by Monica Banks. And that's Monica in the garden. You can see it now if you want. You can see it right now. So when you go to the museum, you can Absolutely. stop in the garden. Absolutely, stop in the garden. And, and the garden open all the time. People... Gardens open all the time. You can come even when we're closed, mm -hmm. on the days that we're closed. And, and then you have, a, you have a uh, raising the alarm conversation. Tell us about that. Yes, um, we're really excited about that because we have Renee Cox, um, who's a major, major artist, and, and also Sanford Biggers. He was just in the New York Times. Each of these artists in their own right are just powerhouses. And we started this, um, this, this conversation, we did the first one, which was called Ring the Alarm. We could and bring the image It was, image it was, it was um, Derek Adams and Renee Cox. And talking about culture and what's happening today in the black community and artists and what they're going through and what their representation is like. Um, and it was so successful. Renee's going to be doing a show for us in 2023. She's going to be guest curating the show. And the first conversation was so exciting, we said, let's do another one. And so she said, OK. And she got Sanford Biggers, who has a show right now at the Bronx Museum. Um, and um, so we're doing that one uh, actually tomorrow night. But you could also watch these there on our YouTube channel. Um, and conversations are exciting. So once, you, once they do a conversation, then it's available on the YouTube channel. On the YouTube so channel. So everyone, can, you can check all these things out. You don't have to be there at the moment. You can see it later another time. Um, that's incredible. It's really wonderful. And uh, if you're there live, of course, you can ask questions through a chat, and you could have your questions answered immediately. If not, you can still watch them on our channel. And there's so many fantastic programs, including this one, and I really highly recommend it. Something that you'll enjoy and you'll learn a lot. I learned so much at the last one, and I'm really excited. And they're, they're lighthearted. They're fun conversations. She said, I don't want to be too heavy. She's just such a wonderful character. I really love her. <laughs> <laughs> She's just heavy enough, right? <laughs> now, you know, n another benefit that's kind of come out of the, the pandemic in a strange way are the studio visits that you used to do in person, but your schedule kept you so busy that you didn't get to 
do to many of them. You're doing them on Zoom, you tell me. It is wonderful. I would probably get to do maybe, I don't know, 20 studio visits maybe all year long. Uh, within the time period of since March, I've done over 40 studio visits. Wow. And it's been really exciting because um, the artists want to have feedback. And it, it gives me the opportunity to be in the studio with them one-on-one. -on -one. They don't need an assistant there. They don't need anybody there. We go around. We talk a little bit about older work, new work. They could do it as a slideshow uh, presentation, or we could actually be looking at the individual pieces. And the response has been fabulous. I've enjoyed it. Um, some of the artists I know, some of the artists are new artists. I've had one artist do twice because she did something very innovative. I said, I really want to see where you're going with this. And just, and just last week, she, was, she did it again. So we did the studio visit again. And it was great to see the progression that she made. So for me, 40 visits in just this amount of time has been really amazing. And how many would you have been able to do if we didn't have maybe 20 all year round and all now this round. is going to continue on so we're probably going to get another at least 15 in before the end of the year um it may take a little break during the christmas time but then we'll begin again in january so it's been a wonderful wonderful thing so again COVID has some good <laughs> has some bad. good things it forced us to do some certain things that would work that worked out really well for us that we will continue on you know even even past even after that happens just because time wise it really makes sense to do something like this and then you could follow through events Eventually, we will do some real studio visits, but it really gives you a first impression, and that's very, very helpful. Thank you so much, Christina, for coming. We have a minute. If there's anything else you want to share with our audience. Uh I would say that there's wonderful things on our website. So if you go to www.guildhall.org, you will find wonderful programs both in the museum. I only talked about the museum programs, but there's a lot of theater programs. Oh, yeah, we, there's going to be a Halloween program that Josh Gladstone is putting together. There have been poetry things. Um, all of these programs that we did this summer, um, you could find them online because they were some of them were actual programs with limited guests and they were all done you know so that you could watch them virtually on our program oh. there's educational programs as well that anthony madonna our education fellow is doing so i would say check out the website because you're going to find something that you're going to like everything is COVID safe we're really following the rules so, so, so go to guildhall.org and learn something new uh it'll in in your spirits, I'm sure. That's right. <laughs> and mask up, too. Mask up, always, yes. Christina, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure to have you. Oh, Patrick, love you. I love so you, much too. fun. <laughs> God bless.